Folks, this video is going to be about some thoughts about this market and why I am issuing a bit of a, a warning with regard to some nefarious action that's going on in the marketplace right now. We're going to talk about my opinions about this market, why you need to get cautious. We're going to talk about charts. We're going to do some technical analysis, and then I'm going to follow up on the top stocks. I went over the weekend, and the first symbol that will be up will be OPTT. That's Ocean Power Technologies, then IDEX Pharmaceuticals, then the DBA, which is the Agriculture ETF, Align Technologies, ALGN, and then leaving off with rent -the center RCII. So let's get to it. Let's begin with this quote, which goes back a couple of thousand years by Sen Tzu, and of course repeated by one of my favorite characters in the entire world, Gordon Gecko as played by the incredible Michael Douglas in Wall Street. Every battle is won before it is ever fought. Every battle is won before it is ever fought. Think about it. What does that mean and how does it pertain to this conversation right here, right now? Let's get to it. Partially what we're doing here is we're playing a bit of 4D chess in the markets. What the markets want you to think right now, what the news, the financial news media wants you to think right now, is that we have a deal at hand here. There's going to be a COVID deal. It's going to be about $2 trillion bucks pumped into the economy. Not to mention what Treasury still has left over from the last stimulus package. And the slick back, suspender wearing thugs on Wall Street want you to believe that this market is going to take off like a rocket ship immediately following that news of an announcement. Let's take the opposite side of that trade for a moment. What if what we're seeing is our traders taking advantage of an anomaly? What's the anomaly? Well, think about what today was and what was closed. Why are we looking at Kiplinger's stock market holiday in 2020? Stock market was open, but what wasn't open? The bond market. The bond market is the tail that wags the stock market dog. And it's the stock market that takes its cues from the bond market. And today, the bond market was closed. NYSE open, NASDAQ open, bond market, right column, closed. So it was a perfect environment for the crooks on Wall Street to orchestrate an event. And that event is get excited, get very, very excited. It began last night, Sunday evening, when we did Sunday Night Futures Live, and then it only gained steam overnight. And when we woke up this morning, we had futures at the open up over 1.6%. They continued to chug higher throughout the day, and at the end of the day, I said, you know what, I need to, I need to get aggressively short of this market. While we went into the market today with a hedge on our long positions, I became a bit more aggressive to the short side. I didn't sell anything today to the long side. I'm still long, but I wanted to get a much larger hedge to the short side. The question is, besides what we just went over with what I believe was to be is shenanigans, a setup, a ruse, a buy the rumor, sell the news event, which is being orchestrated, take a look at the charts. The S&P 500 today was up 1.64% on the day. A very powerful day. A very powerful day. Up strong. Another gap up higher, as they've been doing of late. That's been the game. Spiked the futures in the morning. But today, what they did is, they came, they're playing chicken with the 3D Bollinger Band. The third standard deviation Bollinger Band in red. I'll save you the technical jargon if you're not familiar. We're not supposed to be here on a 20-day moving average relative basis. I'm not predicting a crash. In fact, I believe the Dow Jones Industrial Average could make new all-time highs by Election Day. But beware. What they're trying to do is right here, right now, is to lure you in to getting long of this market in advance of a deal. They want That's the carrot. They want you to chase that carrot. And then you're going to end up if you chase that carrot, like Wile E. Coyote, remember Wile E. Coyote used to run off the cliff until he realized there was no more ground underneath him? He'd look down, and then he'd drop like a bag of rocks. Don't let that be you. 
why else am I very short-term bearish on this market, despite the fact we had an outstanding day? Well, the fact that volume was not wonderful today, despite the fact we moved up higher on the S&P 500. You know what? Let's just, let's just ignore that. What else is bothering me? Look no further than the VIX. Folks, as I always like to teach members, the markets send you signals. And one of my favorite signals, and all too often I'm seeing it of late, and I saw it before the market crash back in February, March, April, the VIX was trading up along with the S&P 500. Recently, we saw that only a few trading days ago. Before the most recent sell-off, the VIX was up along with the S&P 500. And you may be saying, you know, Bob, what's wrong with that? Well, it's not supposed to happen. And it happened again today. The VIX closed up on the day and it managed to recapture 25 support. So what do we read into this? What we read into this is that while you had money rotating into the S&P 500, they weren't going in naked. They were buying insurance vis-a-vis -vis the VIX. The market sends you signals. We can, do, we can complain that the market's rigged. It's not fair to the little guy. That's all true unless you have exhausted your ability to read charts and spot the signals. Level out the playing field. Read the charts. Do the analysis. What else is going on out there? Look no further than the Dow transports. There has been no bigger bull on the Dow transports than me over the past couple of trading weeks. That just came to an end as of today. Short term, longer term, still bullish. Short term, bearish. Why? We have just closed out our fourth consecutive day above the two standard deviation Bollinger Band. Not a three standard deviation Bollinger Band, but a two. However, you're dealing with a massive index. And again, on a 20 period moving average, this is a daily chart, so a 20 day moving average, we're not supposed to be here. The last time we were here, back here on the 16th, it didn't end well. Back here, prior to August the 11th, we went into a consolidation range. We could have easily have rolled over we consolidated, then ultimately we broke out. This is not a time to be buying. It's a time to sit on your hands and wait. If you're overly long, you got profits, make some of them real. So these are my concerns. There's a lot, a lot of nefarious activity going on there. And when you compare the nefarious activity to the technicals in the market, the market is vulnerable. Be very, very careful. This is a short-term call only. I don't see a geopolitical event immediately the election is a whole different bag of rocks that we're going to have to deal with but we'll deal with that in the coming days short term very short term bearish the market be very very careful doesn't mean we can't press higher tomorrow but it does mean you should be thinking about taking cash off the table move to the sidelines let's talk about the symbols that we spoke about over the weekend we had spoken about OPTT, Ocean Power Technology. And I warned over the weekend, while longer term, I was bullish on the shares. I was short-term concerned. And it wasn't because of the daily chart, although I did say that we were right at resistance and I wouldn't buy it into resistance. But I was more concerned about the weekly chart. Here is the weekly chart. We closed out the week last week, up and above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. No shock that we pulled back this week. So some of the froth is coming off here on OPTT. There'll be a time to buy. We'll watch it. It's not right now. Let's watch and wait. IDEX Laboratories, we spoke of as a long. It didn't even give me an opportunity to buy the shares. It, they, just, they just skyrocketed higher. And I'm not one to go chasing stocks. But what I will do here is I will create an alert to see whether or not we pull back and retest the breakout point. Now, I'm labeling this potential long entry because I'm concerned about the market and I'm really just sending a reminder for myself to uh, take the pulse of the market prior to make a decision, sorry, prior to making a decision with regard to opening a new trade. So IDEX looking good. We really didn't have an opportunity to get along today, not on our terms. So we'll wait for our terms to get hit. They always do eventually. 
patience, patience, patience. And I wasn't born with patience. The next symbol up, DBA. This is the AG ETF. It pulled back on the day. I, I'm still bullish. It's holding support. And what really has me bullish about the DB Ag Fund is not the daily chart, not the weekly chart, but the monthly chart, right? This is a monthly chart, and this uh, software I'm using is TrendSpider. There's a link below, 35% off. The leader in automated technical analysis using artificial intelligence, and one of my favorite things here, automated trend lines. And there you go. So we're right at a resistance level. I wouldn't buy here right now. I'd rather buy the breakout unless, of course, we pull back to test one of these two support levels below. So sit, watch, and wait. No rush here. DBA will come to us. Align Technologies. Now, Align did put in a new weekly high so far this week. However, it hasn't broken through our alert, our resistance level, daily chart. Now, to be fair, we did tap it. However, we were unable to break out. One of two things I'd like to see what happened here. One, a breakout and a close above resistance. Two, let's throw up the automated trend lines. Click of a button. A pullback and a retest of this breakout point. We gapped up higher today. Sensitivity, very low. So our alert is set. We want to know when we touch or bounce. Keep that active for five days. We're good to go. So I have two alerts set here. I can find them right here on the right-hand sidebar. And the last chart up is going to be Rent-A-Center, RCII. Now, Rent-A-Center did put in a new weekly high. However, it faded a bit. This is why we don't go chasing stocks. Think about the poor son of a gun who bought all the way up here in the morning, all excited about the market. He was watching CNBC. He got sold at the markets, going to new all-time highs within the next 22 minutes, bought Rent-A-Center at the very high, because it was a surefire bet that he got as a whisper stock from his buddy over in the plush offices of Goldman Sachs, and he got whacked. Think about what this does to confidence when you get a fade. It's happened to me. I know it. Avoid it. Don't go chasing stocks. Wait for the pullback. These alerts were not fired off. Rules-based approach. This is the first time I'm looking at rent center all day long. I didn't look at it. I didn't think about it. I care about when my alerts get fired off. That is it. Members, Let's Talk Strategy, it's posted in the members area. Go check it out, everyone else. I will talk to you tomorrow morning on Swing Trading Today. Catch the replay here on YouTube or on the website, thecontrariantrader.com. And if I can ask you to please smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and tap that bell button and get notified of when we go live or post a new video. Everybody have a great evening. Stay safe out there, and please be careful. Don't go chasing the morning pumps. It's a game. It's a scam. Don't get lured in. Have a great night. Be well.